This is a tutorial of the Wit Eden Wormhole 1. As you can see here. And what I just did was I stripped it of all the centers and these edge pieces. And I call this the Naked Wormhole. As you can see. But I did this at first so I could figure out how the puzzle worked. And so I could get a better understanding of how I should solve it. And it actually seems to help. So I'm going to start you off solving this first. So you just take out these edge pieces first and then take out these centers. And what I noticed when I was solving this was that this piece alone controlled how everything else was moving differently than a regular 3x3x3. Three three three. For example, if you turn it from here, you can see that this holds the majority. Also, if you turn it from here, it still holds the majority and here too. Which means that this piece from this blue center to the orange center to the yellow center, everything encircled between there is all fixed. So only everything else can actually move around and be mixed up. So as you can see here, this will never be flipped around compared to these centers, and they're still all intact. Everything else has changed, though. So what do, you want, what do you want to do first is to take any of these colors. I generally start with the blue, but it doesn't matter which one you start with. And I'm going to first match this piece. So it's pretty much the first cross. So I want to do this first, this yellow and blue right there. And from there, I want to take, I want to use the F2L method, and that's just an alternate method of solving a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. So that's just a method of putting in the corners for the first layer and the edges for the second layer at the same time. If you're still confused about this, you can look it up on YouTube or somewhere else. And the piece that come, the corner piece that comes over here will have a yellow and blue in it. So that is this piece. And the cent this edge piece is already there. So what I want to do is to just take this edge piece out first and then I want to set it up so that when I try to put this one in down here, this piece, this yellow and red, will also be solved with it. So from here, if I set up like this, if I just put it here, this corner piece will be solved and this edge piece will also be solved as well. Like that. And this piece is still intact. And what this does is, ju is it just makes sure that this does not affect any of the other pieces as you're solving the first two layers. Okay, so next, I want to do the next one that's adjacent to this one. So you could have started with this one and then gone to this one. But you should always have the one directly opposite it, blue, orange, and yellow. You should always do this one last. So I'm going to do this one now. And like, I want to solve the cross part first, so the white and blue goes here first. Next, the corner piece that comes over here should have an orange and a blue in it. And that is this piece right here. The edge piece here is white and orange. That's over here. So now I'm going to do the same thing as before and set it up so that when you put it in, the corner will be fixed and this edge will also be solved. And the same thing with this one. And you might have noticed, when I was doing this one, to avoid having this this corner piece affect anything else, I only use the left and the top sides. And over here, I only use the right and the top sides. But the good thing about this last using this as last one is that you can use either side you want. And this is also the only side that you can actually use to flip these pieces around. That's why I'm having this one come last. So, um, I need a, the last blue piece, obviously, this one. And I'm going to put this one in here as well. So, from here I can put it in, and the first two layers will now be solved. Next, the algorithm I use for regular 3x3x3 three by three by three to make the cross up here will work on this one particular puzzle because it uses the front, the right, and the top sides. And there's a configuration of avoiding this corner piece if you start here 
you'll use the front side, which doesn't involve this, right side, which doesn't involve this, and the upside, which does not involve this corner piece. So that's convenient, and what I want to do for that one is, I want in this particular case, when there's two adjacent correct pieces and two adjacent non-correct pieces, I want to have the two that are correct to the back and one to the left. From here, I'm going to do the same algorithm twice. It's going to be F, R, U, R inverted, U inverted, F inverted. And I'm going to do that one more time. And as you can see, that gets across. Next, I want to put these corners, so uh, flip these corners so that the green is on the top. And the algorithm I generally use involves the right, top, and the left sides. And so this one can't be used because no matter what, you will always end up using this one way or another. So instead, I'm going to use an algorithm that swaps these edge pieces, actually, but that also flips some of these corner pieces. And this one is very difficult to explain because there are lots of possibilities with this. But you just have to get used to it by working on it little by little, and you'll get used to some of the patterns that occur. So, for example, I just want to make sure I'm not using this. I can keep it down and to the left. I'm going to use just the right and the top. So from here, for this example, I'm going to start here. R, U, R inverted, U, R, 2U, and R inverted. And now from here, I'm going to do it here. Same thing. And from here, same algorithm, and all the green should end up on the top. And now the next part is to align these in the correct order. So that, for example, these oranges are already matched up, but there should be white here, which means that this piece should come over here, and this piece should come over here. And again, the algorithm I usually use for this involves either the back, top, and the front, or the right, the left, and the front in the top. So I can't use this algorithm either. So instead, I'm going to use a different one I use for the Mega Minx. And this one involves only the top, um, well, the top, the right, and the bottom. But, and it might seem a little strange because you're using the bottom, which affects this. But in this particular um, way of using it, it actually won't affect it. So I'm going to start with this one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out, swap it with this one, and then this one will come to the bottom, and then this one, I will swap it with this one, so these two will maintain their positions, and this one will come over here, so now these two will actually be flipped. So I'm going to start here with this to the bottom left again. I'm going to start here with the first one, and go R inverted, D inverted, R. Next, I'm going to move the next piece over, right where the other one was, and do the exact opposite. R inverted, D, R. And again, same thing, R inverted, D inverted, R. Last piece, R inverted, D, R. And as you can see, everything else is still intact. And these pieces are all in the correct order. And now, last part to do is to swap these edge pieces with each other so that they align up in the correct order. First, you can see that this piece is already solved, and this might not happen, and if it doesn't happen, you can start absolutely anywhere, but in this case, where it does work out, so that one of the pieces at least is already solved, you want to start with that piece all the way in the back. This algorithm only involves the top, uh, the right and the up sides, so f what, the, what it does is it turns this piece, this piece, and this piece, rotates them counterclockwise. So it's going to be R, U inverted, R, U, R, U, R, U inverted, R inverted, U inverted, and 2R. And as you can see, that solves everything. So that's how you solve the naked wormhole, which is the first step to solving the Whit-Eden wormhole 1.